show you um, what I did for Serenity Fox's Time to Sin. I did this 90% manually using um, some workarounds in vellum and I'm going to show you how to do that. The first thing I'm going to tell you right now is when I do formatting for my clients, I automatically separate their files into two. I do it for a time to send an ebook and then a paperback for every file that I do. And I just insert the ebook, do the complete ebook and have everything the way I want to before I will press duplicate, rename it to paperback. And I do this because you can't do some of the things that I do um, or use some of the features the same way um, otherwise you will have overlapping images and things like that. Or if you want to go back and change something in the ebook, but you don't need to in the paperback, it just, it makes it so much simpler. Um, so I always have two files for everything. As you can see for the time to send ebook, I did a very nice sea breeze, um, uh, with just easy translation into arc reading. If you don't have the giant big um, scroll letters uh, at the beginning, the drop caps, it makes it easier for arc readers when they get it via book funnel um, on their on their Kindle, it's fine. But when they get it on their phone or on their on their iPad, it can sometimes be a bit off. So I just usually when I send an arc file out, I change it and then the ebook I'll add in the drop caps if an author wants it. So as you can see, we did a chapter title and then we did a small header imaging with the name of her point of view character. Rosemary is her heroine. Thorn is her hero or anti-hero. I guess it would be more of a hero for time to sin. Um, so I created a separate paperback so you can still see that there are still some things um, that are here. And as we know, some of these have included and you can include it in the print only or the ebook only. But when it, when it comes to still having to go back and change things, it just so much so much simpler to do the separate files um so i'm going to show you how i did this i'm going to come up here and put it on the print i did this entire thing manually via canva and i moved it down so we know that it's really hard if i go to a chapter say chapter nine here and it started out with this heading image if i try to apply anything over this chapter eight's gonna stay there right so if i if i go in here and i apply oh and i apply one of these backgrounds this isn't the right background it's gonna stay there right but then if i remove the header image if i hide the heading all of it automatically goes up and then you can't see what's at the top so I'm going to show you how I get around this and it involves um, a little bit of, of, of time work depending on how long your book is. Um, but I'm going to show you a very simple way to do this and we're going to go over to Canva here. So in my Canva, um, I automatically usually have a blank um, entry page here, which I don't have this time. I think I used it. So I'm just going to come here to my ornament to break. Wait for it to load because it's always super slow. And I'm just going to delete these images here. I'm going to resize. I'm going to do four by one inches. So it's going to look like this. So now I can't put this in. Um, I can't save this. Like I can't download it. It won't let me. Um, that's just the way Canva is. It has to have something on it. So what I tend to do is I'm just going to go to text heading. And I'm just going to add a random text. And let me get kind of big. Doesn't really matter. As long as there's something here, it doesn't matter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select it. I'm going to press white because I want it to blend into the background and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go to transparency and I'm going to zoom it all the way down. If you don't have the Canva um, paid version, this version, this should work fine for you. This is completely free. This shouldn't involve anything paid um, for it. So then I'm going to name it when I want to, which is blank break. 
I'm gonna go to download. I am gonna go to transparent background and I'm gonna download it. So I'm gonna head back over to Vellum here. And as you can see in these, I already have like these pulled up here. Um, I've got one, two, three, four of them. So if we come to here to eight, we're gonna go to image. We're gonna click on image and then we're gonna search that blank break. We're gonna press choose. And as you can see, it moved down our stuff. And this is another reason why you can't overlap this with ebook is because of that. So I'm going to basically go and select it, press control copy or con command copy. And I'm going to press right there, right before the first paragraph. I'm gonna press control paste or command paste until I've got it exactly where I want it. And then what I do is I just scroll up. Oh. Ah. Scroll up until I have them all, copy them all. And so now when I go forward to this one, I just put my cursor right before the first paragraph, press control V, and it's already set for me. Um, and that's perfect. So we did Seabreeze for hers. I wanted hers in this one to have more of a fancy feel. Um, so I'm going to configure Seabreeze and we're going to go to heading background. So now this is where I told you it's a little bit time consuming, depending on how you do it. Some of the pictures that I can use, I can utilize the, um, chapter headings already, but this one I couldn't because I needed it to be white, but because I'm only doing a half page, um, the rest still has to be black. So I had to do this all manually. And so what I did here, if you can, is I took the picture and then I did right along here, I used Procreate and my Apple Pen to make a nice brushed kind of version of it. It's okay if it's in color um, because it will um, translate to black and white when Vellum um, prints it. Um, or not print it, but a PDF set and you're selecting black, as long as you're selecting black and white in Amazon, that's exactly how it will be. Um, it doesn't matter the color. You can put full color images in there and select black and white on Amazon. Um, so I just kind of brush stroked it out. You can also do this by clicking the photo, going to edit image and using the background remover. And when you use the background remover, you can just use the tool, um, to smooth out those edges. I will, won't have the sprayed kind of look to it because that's something that is in Procreate. If you want to learn a little more about this, um, let me know in the comments down below and I will do a video on that. So basically all I did was I selected Magnolia Light, which is a, um, font that I downloaded personally onto Canva, um, using my brand kit. And I did that for her chapter up here. And then I did Rosemary. So I already have chapter eight saved, I believe. So let's do chapter nine. And then I already have Rosemary's. I'm doing all of Rosemary's first. And then I'll go back and do um, her hero's thorn. So I'm going to download that. And I'm going to back to Vellum. So here you have your custom heading background. You can select add a background because you can use multiple backgrounds. So all of the ones that are Rosemary up here, I'm labeling R1, R3, R5, R6, whichever chapter um, he is, so she is. So I'm gonna go to add background, use an alternative chapter background. I'm gonna name this R8. Make sure I'm doing the full bleed on it. I, I usually do it, uh, image presence all the way up. I'll show you that in a second. So make sure that your page size is equal to what it says right um, here where it says information underneath the box because um, it will not fit um, and stretch properly even if you're doing a half page. So we're gonna go to R8. And right now it's not gonna show anything because I haven't applied it. And then at the same time, I'm gonna add R9. And you can always add these all at once if you want to. R9, make sure that image presence is full. And then I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna go to R8. 
it's already down for us and I'm going to go to heading background so I'm going to click on this little um, gear and I'm going to go to heading background and I'm going to press R8 and it's going to change it to chapter 8 for me um, and then I'm going to go to 9 and I'm going to do that exact same thing and it's going to automatically put it in there for me and then I'm going to search out more of those that are like that get rid of the headings because I don't want those so 11 and 12 I do these in twos or the next ones I want so I'm going to come back here and I'm going to do the exact same thing and that is how you can do a half page workaround if you don't have the um If you don't have like if you can't if you have an image you want to use but you can't seem to get it to utilize um, with whatever vellum has so that is one workaround for you guys so you just keep doing that throughout it with Thor I'll just go back and change this down here to say thorn and I'll go through and do that and that is it and again remember I always recommend doing a paperback different from an ebook um, cause you tend to also have separate things. So for example, copyrights, uh, not copyrights, contents aren't going to go into, um, into the paperbacks. It's not common practice, um, for that to ha really happen anymore with fiction. Um, so I don't usually recommend it. Another thing that I do differently is, um, about the author on my paperbacks because you can't click these links. I always have my customers give me a QR code if they have one from like their link tree or their beacons, um, whatever platform that they use. And so that when, if somebody's reading the paperback instead of the ebook, they can just click it with their phone. Um, if you have any more questions, feel free to put it in the comments down below.